This is the new Motorola Razr. Now, technically there was a Razr that came out in February, which had a, uh, well, a number of issues. Look, we don't have time to get into that, but the new Razr addresses most of those issues and is overall just a better phone. So this new Razer is definitely better, but does it have all the specs like the Motorola Edge Plus or the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra? Nope, but neither of those phones can do this. Or are this small? Ah, that feels good every time. And while the $1,400 price is $100 less than the February Razer and $50 cheaper than the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5G, yeah, it's still $1,400. I can buy nine Motorola e-phones for that price. I could buy two iPhone 11s for that. I can rent a small bedroom for one month in someone's house in San Francisco for that. Yeah, I'd rather, rather get a razor. So here's what you get for that price. A phone that folds in half. And again, that feels so good doing that. And that is important to remember because there isn't wireless charging or a high refresh rate display or a gigantic battery or IP rated water and dust resistance or a headphone jack or headphones or the most powerful Snapdragon processor. Instead, you get this and this. And in 2020, to fold a 6.2 inch phone into something the size of a small drink coaster and that's about the thickness of a deck of cards, you're gonna pay $1,400. And I gotta say this, this foldable flip phone form factor feels so good to use. And if it was a car, it would be a fun two seat convertible. Now, during my time with it, I wasn't nervous to use the Razer like a regular phone, meaning I didn't feel I needed to be careful with it. I wiped the foldable screen on my jeans. I kept the phone in my pocket or in my bag. Some of that assurance comes from its build and how the screen folds flat together, being protected by the sides of the phone. But some of that is my perception. I want to be confident that if it's in my pocket with my house keys, that it won't get destroyed. That confidence and trust is huge. And I didn't feel that all the time when I reviewed the February Razor. So where does this new trust come from? Simple, it feels solid. And a lot of that's the new aluminum and Gorilla Glass 5 build of the phone. AKA there isn't any plastic on the back. Also, Motorola invited me to come visit one of their testing laboratories, wearing a mask and socially distanced, of course, and see one of the 40 different machines they use to test the Razor's durability. Now this particular machine folds the phone in half to simulate years of use in just a matter of days. The idea is that most people will never fold the Razer enough to hit Motorola's 200,000 fold lifespan. By the way, if you wanna see more about the testing that went into this Razer, I made an entire separate video about it. Going back to that two-seater convertible, it's not a car for everyone, and the Razer's the same way. I don't think I'd take this to the beach or skiing, or a Galaxy Z Flip 5G for that matter but it is a phone I'd use as a daily driver. And when the day comes that we are regularly traveling and commuting to work again, that's where this phone will thrive. So how's it holding up after a week and a half? Overall, good. Perhaps my favorite feature on the Razer is the quick view display, which got a lot more useful on this model. And fundamentally, this is where the Razer and the Galaxy Z Flip couldn't be more different. There's basically like three modes, let's call them modes, on the outside display. The first is peak display mode that lets you see notifications just by pressing and holding on an icon. The next is like a peak display mode plus, where you can press and hold on an icon, then swipe up to reveal multiple notifications as well as respond to them. But it's the third mode, let's call it mini Android phone mode, where the true power of the quick view display gets unleashed. When the phone is closed and unlocked, you can swipe down to get to the control panel. You can swipe up to see something similar to the notification shade. Swipe to the left to go to the camera. Swipe to the right to see a grid of apps. Swipe to the right again to see contact favorites. The phone can curate a list of apps from your existing apps that will work well on a smaller screen. And when you use these apps, you can go back and forth between the quick view display version and the interior display and pick up right where you left off. Or you can do what I did and put this into unlimited. Now, that allows me to try pretty much any app on the quick view display, like PUBG, yes, PUBG Mobile the game. Yep, while you can barely make out the controls, it is possible to play PUBG on the outside display. 
I also played some other games like Alta's Odyssey and uh, Super Mario Run. Now, not every app is optimized for that small display, but it marks an enormous step in the right direction for Motorola. And as much as I enjoy opening and closing the phone, I really do love living the quick view display life. Now, a benefit of using the quick view display is that it doesn't tax the battery life as bad. And that's good. As the new Razer gets me through almost a day, I typically find myself topping off at dinner time. And that's with using 5G. I'm getting about seven and a half hours of screen on time. And in a test with continuous video playback on airplane mode, the Razer lasted 15 hours and 53 minutes. That's an hour and 50 minutes more than the February Razer lasted in the same test. And that's 53 minutes more than the Galaxy Z Flip, the one without 5G. But make sure you check in with my written review on CNET.com because I'll be updating that with more battery tests. And speaking of 5G, the Razer can work on sub six flavors of 5G, like on AT&T and T-Mobile. I've been testing this Razer on T-Mobile's 5G here in Chicago. Sometimes it gets speeds over 100 megabits per second for downloads, that's outside. And other times it gets speeds that are 4.55 megabits per second, that's also outside. Both of those results were well within the 5G coverage on T-Mobile's map. And I think it speaks more to T-Mobile's 5G network than it does about this phone. Then there are the cameras, which both got solid upgrades. The selfie camera atop the internal display is much better than the February Razer. It's great for Zoom meetings, taking selfies, though video recording on the selfie camera does top out at 1080p. The exterior camera has 48 megapixels and uses pixel binning to create good 12 megapixel photos. The camera is much better than the February Razer. And thanks to optical image stabilization and the time of flight sensor, I'm getting a much more acceptable rate of in focus and sharp photos. Is this camera on the same level as the iPhone 11 or Google Pixel 4a? <laughs> no way, Jose. Unless Motorola added a Note 20 ultra size bump onto the Razer, please don't do that. There's only so much room for a sensor and lens in something that's this small. Low light and zoomed in photos get soft and look like a painting because of all the noise reduction. There is a night vision mode that can help, but I find it works best in medium to low lighting situations versus situations where it's very dark. Now take a look at some of the photos I took with the Razer. The main camera also shoots 4K video and the quality is decent. Video definitely doesn't have the same dynamic range as photos and suffers from image noise and artifacts, but I'm happy with the clips I was able to record. So check some out. Powering all of this is eight gigabytes of RAM and a Snapdragon 765G processor. Now, I know some of you will be turned off by the lack of Snapdragon 865 processor, but as we've seen in other Android phones this year, the 765 is a solid processor. In the Razer, it handled gaming, videos, photo edits, multitasking really well. And in benchmark tests, it scored right on par with the LG Velvet. But not everything was rosy on this new Razer. I noticed that the glass in the back has a few minor scuffs that are barely visible, but they're there. Motorola does make this nifty $50 case for the Razer. Also, when I opened and closed my review unit in February, it made this weird loud squeak. For the most part, this one didn't. I say for the most part, because when I was filming the unboxing video for the Razer, I didn't hear a squeak. But when reviewing the footage, one of my video producers noticed that my mic picked up a small squeak. Now, my time with the Razer has largely been squeak free until yesterday. I don't know if it's the humidity or what, but I mean, it's nowhere as loud as the one in February, but every time I hear the squeak, I feel conflicted. I feel disappointed. Now I asked a friend how they felt when they heard the squeak and it didn't bother them. Now when I guess when it comes to screen notches, foldable screen creases and squeaks, some of you will get used to these things while others will be wildly annoyed. 
I should add too that the squeak comes from the hinge mechanism, but doesn't indicate any mechanical problems with the phone. When all is said and done, where do I end up on the Razer? Well, first I have to give Motorola a ton of credit for all the changes and improvements they've made to this new Razer. I absolutely enjoy using it and I really can't wait to try this out long-term. As far as the price, this isn't a phone for everyone, especially with the financial hardships so many people are enduring right now. I think if you were interested in buying the Razer or serious about buying the Razer in February, that you should consider getting this version. It's a refinement in nearly every way over that phone. No, you are paying a lot of money to get a phone that does this. And if folding your phone in half is something you're willing to pay for, the new Razer is worth considering. You know what, I'm gonna hear from you guys. What do you think of this new Razer? Is this something you're looking to buy? Do you have the original Razer? How do you think it compares? Throw your thoughts in the comments.